and we talked about the Texans earlier. Jonathan Gannon, the Eagles defensive coordinator, reportedly has been told he's no longer in the running. Now, that's unconfirmed, and who knows by the time this airs on Monday morning what else will be out there. But as of right now, 5.19 p.m. Eastern time, 2.19 p.m. Pacific on Sunday as we tape this, it's reportedly down to Brian Flores and Josh McCown. There is no way in hell that the Texans can hire Josh McCown. <laughs> if they do, I mean, he Flores literally put, put, should put that on his lawsuit as well, right above the Bill Belichick thing and go, wait, a guy who hasn't coached at any level of anything, maybe his kids, you know, seven High on school seven team. flag team, High school. right, whatever. He's going to be a head coach before me, the guy who's led the Dolphins to two winning seasons in a row for the first time in 20 years. Won eight out of nine games to finish like, the season. I, th that, that, to me, would just be the ultimate. And, the, Mike, I don't know. Am I crazy? Again, maybe I hang out with you too much. And I, 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 even within this, I know Flores knows Nick Casaria out there with the, the Houston Texans. They were all in New England together. But it's like, is Flores I, – I, I'm going to – you know, conspiracy Chris is going to go, is he in the final two only because the NFL is saying to make sure he's in the final two right now with this subject? Or, or may, hey, hey, listen, there right. may be some high level backroom negotiations going on along the lines of things we've heard in the past where right. the NFL approach, you know, maybe Houston gets in the Super Bowl rotation. Yeah, right. You know, maybe I mean, who knows what the right. NFL will offer to get the Texans to do this. But at the end of the day. Cal McNair is going to do what he wants to do. Yeah. And Jack Easterby has a hell of a hold on McNair. And, and look, we've talked plenty about Jack Easterby. I have my opinions about him. I have a feeling Brian Flores is not is, that kind of is guy. Is more inclined to agree with my assessment of Jack Easterby and not fall for that crap. I would agree. If it is crap, if it is agree. an act, if yeah. it is a routine. Right. You know, I, I think Flores is not going to is not going to take that bait. And, uh, and and that may make Easterby more inclined to, to hire the guy that he wants to hire. That, his that's good friend Josh McCown. And this is nothing you. against Josh McCown. Not at all. But, but at I some hope he point, kicks butt. But, but at some weird. point, isn't it, if you're Josh McCown, don't you have to say, this probably isn't a good idea for me to take this job. This I'm probably sure. isn't a good idea. But he's also going, what? You're going to give me $6 million a year to do it? It, <laughs> yeah. I, it is a good idea. Yeah. I mean, I mean I there's be plenty of jobs that I'm not qualified to do. Right. If somebody would offer me to do it, I'd convince myself <laughs> overnight that I'm qualified to at least try. Yeah, I can't hate him. I, you, know, the, you, know, hate, you know, don't hate the player, hate the game, right? Like we always talk about. It's not his fault. And I'm certainly, again, there, I'm, I'm rooting for him. But to your point, Mike, I do want to say that. I, I'm with you. That's the other thing that made me think this thing sounds fishy. And where I'm, because... Easterby, Nick Casario. Again, I don't know Jack Easterby. I know Nick Nick Casario is a real football guy. You know, he's a little bit more soft-spoken in his ways. There is even a little bit of a religious element down there with the Houston Texans. And again, a little I'm not judging. A lot of bit. You're right. I'm not judging, but. Also, Brian Flores, I know, is a religious guy. I just don't know if I see him as their kind of guy there. Brian Flores is a – he's – like every good coach, is brutal. And that was one of the complaints we got in Miami. He was too tough on us. Prickly. Man, he's prickly. prickly. Oh, because he didn't kiss ass and say yes to the owner and the GM all the time. Like, how prickly was he? Come on. He was with a staff of people from New England who worked for Bill Belichick. They knew what the Brian Flores is about. So these are people that were anti-Flores that are putting this out there, right? Coats the way good coaches are. Shanahan was prickly, too, when things weren't going good. Belichick is prickly, too, when things don't go well. I mean, good you coaches know, are. Good coaches. John Harbaugh is you, prickly. You come in, yeah. and you're trying to change culture. Exactly. You're trying to improve the team. You're trying to hold people accountable. You're trying to expect more right. than what already was there. Because right. that's why they're changing coaches. Exactly. It wasn't good enough. Right. So you have somebody who comes comes in and is demanding and is coaching everyone exactly and people get threatened by yeah, that no and doubt people don't like that I've never and I think that way. happened He's to Flores. Me, I think so too I'm with you and that, my point to button that up was that's why I don't I, I don't know if that works with the Texans I don't know I just because Brian Flores he's been there and done that now he'll love that Nick Casario is running the front office because he's gonna go well it's being run the way I was taught the right way the New England way he'll love that you know but the personalities is something I do question and if you made me bet I think I'd bet that Josh McCown is going to be the head coach down in Houston right I now. thought Gannon would be the compromise candidate. I really did. And and here's the other reality. If they give Brian Flores a job, yeah. he has said the lawsuit's not going away. Right. So there will be, while he's coaching, we talk about distractions. Oh. Coaches don't want distractions from the locker room. 
He's bringing the biggest distraction the Texans are going to have with this lawsuit that he refuses with, to dismiss or settle. With Watson having to talk about that, too. With, and, and, with, yeah. and, and really, you know, think about it. There will be developments. There will be testimony. There will be allegations. Look at how strong the statements were that were issued by the Giants last week, by John Elway last week, and by Stephen Ross. And we're going to talk about this in a minute. The allegation of $100,000 being offered per loss to Flores in 2019. I think that's where, and we've had, we've, we've nailed this. That's where the relationship went south. You nailed it, Mike. You Ross really going into it. 2019. Yeah. yeah wanted to full season tank right he wanted to be the worst team in the league and get the first overall pick in the draft sometimes right. you got to take your lumps yep and Brian Flores decided at some point during that season he's not going along with it yeah and he he alleges as part of this lawsuit that he was offered a hundred thousand dollars per loss brought by Stephen Ross and I think his resistance is what got Ross thinking this isn't going to work. No doubt. This guy's I, not listening to me. I'm the boss. I'm the owner. It's my team, and he's not doing what I want to do with my team. This guy's got to go at some I, point. I, 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 you know, I, I know I confirmed to you. I, I don't think Brian Flores would be mad. I, I think he feels the same way. He shared those sentiments with me personally, that you know he felt like things went south after that. That it was he he if he had a look after he got fired and he looked back at the situation a little bit I think that was one of the first things that jumped out to him about where it started I mean, to go since wrong we're, since we're peeling back the curtain right. we articulated this thought and he reached out to you and said he's absolutely right exactly right we're exactly it's right. all it's all laid out in the lawsuit it's now. all he's, laid he's out said it so publicly that's what I mean so I'm not really worried about sharing yeah. it that way but yes I think there was that that stance there and it goes into something that I know you and I have talked about a lot too where you know, this is why these coaches don't want to tank. Because here they are, a lot of situations, they tank or do what the owner says, but three years later or two years later, that record gets held against exactly. them. Exactly. And you get fired and you go, well, wait, you told me to lose. Well, you're, you know, and then they, they end up getting fired. It goes on their gravestone. And, it, and people don't understand the context of the situation. And that's where it becomes really difficult for the head coach. That's another reason why to circle back to the Texans for one last minute. Yeah. Another reason why it would be difficult for the Texans to hire Brian Flores, there is an entire section of his complaint where he talks about the treatment of David Culley by the Texans, that they brought him in to fail. They brought him in to preside over a lost season. And then when the season was lost, right. then they said we have philosophical differences and we can't continue. What philosophical differences? All what? the BS that right. we called publicly or, or the team is was in this playing lawsuit. too good and we're yeah. a little scared of where this is going. You, you actually did better than we wanted you to. It's going to be hard for the Texans to look past that. Uh -huh. cause they, it's not quite a direct shot at them. They're not sued, but it's a shot across the bow at them. And they're no going to have to forget that if they want to hire them. I just I don't think at the end of the day, Cal McNair, who won the 23 and Me lottery and inherited his team from daddy. <laughs> it's what it is. Sorry. It's yeah. the truth. Yeah. He's not going to do it. He's, I'll be stunned if he does it. And he's only going to do it, I think, if he gets some sort of promise from the NFL. And we start seeing L.A., Las Vegas, Houston, Miami. L.A., Las Vegas, Houston, Miami, Super Bowl rotation. It's going to take something like that. It probably it's will. To take one for the team. It's shocking that we're down to Flores versus this team, like you said. Because this is a team in the NFL who, you know, again, just accusations. But it's been accused of, you know, not necessarily the right behaviors and things being said behind the scenes by ex-players, DeAndre Hopkins, Dwayne Brown, Deshaun Watson. There's obviously something there that they don't like the way things are handled. Even the, the comments that, you know, were released, you know, uh, earlier this year from Cal McNair in the last offseason at the golf outing or whatever. So it's not the greatest history. So now we have here a guy, the African-American coach who's standing up for all African-American coaches. And he's a finalist for the organization where most African-American players don't even want to play there. They don't even like the, the mojo down there. And here we got that. I find that ironic. Peter King made a great point on Friday when he said, hey, if they would hire Brian Flores, all of a sudden, if they all of a sudden changed everything. Team. You're right. And, and, and players may want to go there. Right. Right. Uh, but, but it's going to take a lot. It's going to take a lot of arm twisting for Cal McNair to point him in that direction. And Jack Easterby, who's got some sort of bizarre hold, it appears, in my opinion, on Cal McNair, where McNair does whatever Easterby wants him to do. So he I'll be stunned. Trend. I'll be stunned. As you remember, it's it's like Jafar and the Sultan. <laughs> yeah. It's I mean, he's somebody's got to take that staff and break it in half to break that spell that Easterby has over McNair. What is that, Prove Jafar and Sultan? What is that? Aladdin. Aladdin. It is. Yeah. Okay. No, yeah, he had that no, staff, yeah, right, and he would no, like stick no. it in his face like, and keep him in yeah. line. Yeah. Right. So uh, we're not saying. 
saying that Jack Easterby is Jafar. We're just making the comparison between the hold that Easterby seems to have over Cal McNair and Jafar and the Sultan. So I guess we are. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, well. Let's oh, well. take a break. Uh, I think we've exhausted that topic I as think much so. as we can. But, but look, in all seriousness, and I know it's Super Bowl week and we spent a half hour talking about it, but this is the biggest news in the NFL. It's not going away. Yeah. The NFL has taken body blow after another as it gets ready for its signature event of the year. It's, it's being held to reckon for the racial issue, the tanking problem, yeah. and there's a clear incentive to tank. They've created a system that yeah. incentivizes tanking. And now... I don't even think we're going to talk about it today, but the stuff that happened late last week with the Washington football team and what we learned about the investigation, it's a bad time for the NFL when it's supposed to be a good time for the NFL. But bright, shiny objects. Just look around. Look at your screen. Look at that. Bright, shiny objects. Forget about all this stuff. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.